Good afternoon, Abdul Salam, Baryun. Assalamualaikum. Uh, could you please rename your, uh, your name uh, with the first is uh, D2S3? Yes. I will share my screen. Uh, you mean uh, you want me to register? Uh, I already registered. Yes. Uh, like this format. So D two S three uh presenter number which uh which uh session uh, one two three four then your name thank you
Okay, uh, very good afternoon. Uh, I would like to check uh, the, the presenter for today. Uh, firstly, is from the Morocco uh, for the Abdel Fateh uh, Haydin is it, uh, here, mm, not yet. And the uh, second is George Princess. Present yet, and Seta Rahman, and uh, it's not coming yet. And lastly, Abdul Salam Baryun, if I'm not uh, spelled wrongly. Uh, could you please uh, rename your name, Abdul Salam, to the D2S3 uh, underscore uh, four? Yes, four, and then your name. Thank you very much. Excuse me, uh, I didn't know where, where to uh, rename. Is it on the web page or uh, here in the room? Could you please uh, rewind again? Speak again. Uh, where to rename? Uh, my name uh, is it on the page. Uh, and the spread D two in the front, um, beside your name Abdul Salam uh, is D two S three underscore three uh, in underscore four. Then your name. I mean, where 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 to rename on, on the beside your name in the participant. Oh, the participant uh, video huh? here. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is it okay now? Uh, it's okay, thank you very much. Let us, uh, let us wait for another other speaker to come. Okay, uh, good afternoon uh, for the uh, presenter named George Princess. Could you rename your uh, name to format uh, like my screen? So, uh, D2S3 uh, dash or underscore uh, the a presenter number, then your name. Then after that, uh, and this is the the um, the list of the presenter. Firstly, is uh, Abdul Fateh Haidin from Morocco. Then second is a uh, George Princess from the India. Uh, third is a uh, uh, Setaraman from India. Then lastly is uh, Abdul Salam from Libya. Uh, could you please rename your uh, 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 your name to this uh, following uh, example? Thank you.
Okay. Uh, for the first presenter, uh, for let us start. Um, for thank you for all the participants from the room three uh, about the uh, Internet of Things uh, in our conference. So I'm uh, Muhammad Iqbal Habibi as a moderator for today in this room. So I would like to uh, open this uh, room. Uh, for the first speaker, it, it, it will be uh, uh, Abdul Fateh Haidin about the communication backbone for environment monitoring application uh, in smart maritime ports, case study in a Moroccan port. Uh, the time is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, doctor. Uh, so I will uh, share the presentation. So, So you have a uh, uh, 15 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for the Q&A. Thank you very much. Okay, you can see the slides, my presentation? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you, doctor. Okay, I will start. So good morning, uh, dear colleagues. I say good morning because I am from Morocco and it is uh, seven o'clock, 7.30 in the morning. So uh, welcome to my presentation entitled Communication Backbone for Environment Monitoring Applications in Smart Maritime Ports with a special uh, case study for a Moroccan port. So the content of my presentation is the following. First, we will have, uh, uh, first we'll see the current challenges that are facing the maritime ports operators and then to see how far the concept of smart ports will solve these problems or almost all these problems. Then the role of ICT in the smart port. And we will have a more focus on the part of environment, environment monitoring and smart port. And then we discuss the main challenges of Moroccan port in this uh, other in the uh, from the point of view of environmental impact. And then we will close with conclusions and perspectives. So the maritime ports uh, are becoming a very critical uh, issue for the world uh, economy because more than 80% of goods are delivered over or through maritime transport or maritime routes. Here, a general uh, picture of what is Mari maritime transport network? It is a graph with a set of nodes or vertices and a set of edges or links. So uh, for the maritime routes, they must be secure, cost efficient, with short delay, and to be reliable. If not, if we fail to, uh, to guarantee this performance, then we will have such scenario when the very important link, the Suez Canal was blocked for about, I see one week with the evergreen uh, ship container and with a huge impact on the economy and the world. The second part of maritime transport networks, which are the ports or nodes, they also must be secure, cost efficient, to deliver uh, the short delay uh, and to, uh, to must be reliable. If not, if we will not guarantee this two short delay and the reliability, we will have some uh, such scenario, which is a real satellite imagery that is showing the scale of the traffic congestion. And at that day, it were more than 70 container ships are waiting in the front of the ports of Los Angeles. I, each dot here, it is a small ship container and we will see the jump or the congestion uh, in the front of the port. All that uh, container ships are waiting to have access to enter to the terminals 
to un to load or unload the container ships. And according to some news that uh, in average, each container is loading with the goods of a uh, value of one million dollars. Uh, it is here, uh, it is from uh, Washington Post. They show that from month to month, the situation is going worse and worse. And here each yellow dot is uh, representing a uh, sh ship container in the image satellite uh, in the satellite image which will, which will not uh, easy uh, visible and they presented here with yellow dots and we can see that from month to month we are having very long waiting queue here and then we read in the news shortly that record shattered 73 container ships stuck waiting of california this is not only for California or US uh, ports, but also this is for other countries. We can read here or see in the news around 50 container ships roaming back up around the Yantian port, which is the major gateway for China goods heading to Western nations. So what does it mean if we have such scenario when we have a long queue of uh, ships waiting for the, to have access to the ports uh, terminals. Here, just a small picture showing only uh, six or eight uh, container ships. But imagine if we have seventy are waiting here. So there is a lot of recording in progress. Uh, long waiting time, which uh, results in insufficient goods in supermarkets, and price will increase. Also, and that is very hard, it is perturbation of the production chains. And that is what we are experiencing now, for example, for Europe, for uh, cars production. Also, container logistic providers are losing time and money because they are getting money to deliver this container and this price are already fixed. And now they are only sitting and waiting here and losing time and also money. Similar for ship owners also losing time and money. And imagine that we have 73 ships uh, with this worst scenario, real scenario, but it is a bad scenario. So all they are running diesel motors to generate electricity to, um, for all operation on the ships. And this has a very bad impact for the environment. We'll have pollution of the air, high, high noise pollution and vibration, high risk of water pollution, waste production. And uh, during the waiting time, the crew are executing a lot of reparation works on the ship and we have risk of leaks in the water and of course we are not sure that different crews are respecting the international standards if uh, of the environment protection uh, protection if they are aware of such uh, standards for all this problem the smart port is general concept which should solve most or all of these challenges or problems related to maritime ports. So what is the smart port concept? We find different uh, uh, definitions, but I keep this one. It is one of the well-seated papers and the recent one, it is well-seated in, in this uh, community. So the smart port is a port which is customer and community-centric port distinguished with this pictures with these features, uh, smart port services, vessel and container management, technology, ICT technologies, use of sustainable technology to, encourage, uh, to increase energy efficiency and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, cluster management at the hub infrastructure. What is a little bit bothering is that we don't have a lot of details, but not explicitly uh, the environment monitoring and protection. So these five smart application, uh, according to this uh, reference, should build the uh, smart port. Uh, but from our point of view, we could extend, we will have uh, to some very known smart domains and why we can just adapt them to reuse this, uh, the investigation and studies and to adapt them to the concept of smart port. So we will have to use smart building with all what we know, energy efficiency, building automation, access control, et cetera. Environment monitoring, that will be the focus of uh, my presentation. Uh, intelligent traffic management on the 
uh, port yard and in the interface with the hinterland. Smart grid with microgrid, renewable energy, container management, site management, and e-health or smart e-health in order to give clinical remote assistance in case of incidents or emergency, and also to monitor some people, crew members with some risk or with some chronic diseases like diabetes, high blood pressure, or epilepsy attacks. So smart uh, IoT layer model, it is a concept which is used to model any smart thing or any smart environment. For example, smart grid, which is smart or intelligent, intelligent electricity network. We have the infrastructure or assets over uh, dispatched in the country, uh, in the country. And the other side, we have different departments and different software and tools to make a good management of this infrastructure. And between them, we have a communication infrastructure for data collection and execution of instructions. So this concept can be uh, modeled with this uh, layered architecture. Infrastructure assets are in this layer called component, communication layer, information layer, function, and business layer. From the point of view of telecommunication or ICT, the ITO, International Telecommunication Union Standardization Body, they propose this IoT reference model. Similar with the European Telecommunication Standard Institute, they proposed as machine to machine reference model. And we propose this generalized IoT, which make a kind of uh, combination of uh, the, the model in the literature to have where we have the physical infrastructure or assets, sensor actors, et cetera, communication layer, data information layer, services, dashboard application, and then business layer. And at each layer, we will have some management functionalities. They enter, they maybe that interact with among them. And we have also security at each level. In our group, we focus on ICT layer, and in this presentation, more on communication. So as I see, uh, for smart port, we take some concepts, smart domains, and we adapt them to the, mari uh, to the maritime ports environment or context. Here we have one IoT layered IoT model for environment monitoring, but it is in marine and especially in ocean. And we have a layered model with different uh, applications. What we need, we need to make a kind of adaptation to be applicable to the smart maritime port. Because in maritime port, we have different type of areas. We have seaside or sea part. We have the littoral, we have the port yard, and we have the hinterland. And we will use, we could also make uh, use drones or heat camera or best drones to detect any smoke or fire as early as possible to save lives goods and nature, I mean, animal plants and trees uh, or forests or rivers, etc. This monitoring can be applied also to the natural landscape if we have forest in the neighborhood of the, of the maritime port. Drones can, uh, can fly intensively in very hot days uh, with high risk of bush fire. And this uh, summer was very critical for Morocco, for Algeria, Greece, and Italy, Spain, all Mediterranean and all area, they have a uh, problem with fire disasters uh, in hot summers. Camera drones can also assisted by artificial intelligence and machine learning to detect pollutants that can be chemical leaks or oil leaks. Also, this is possible also to, for, to track hard trash. Green, pay, uh, green space on uh, port area are very challenging in dry regions. Uh, like Morocco in Mediterranean uh, area because we need irrigation system because we have uh, not a lot of rain. So now I go a little bit deeper to environment monot monitoring and smart port. Uh, from this IoT layer model for my environment port, we have normally just wireless sensor network clusters, we call it node network or clusters with sensors and actuators, and then one central node which collect information and send it to uh, mostly uh, wireless network. And this data over internet will be uh, 
disponible, available on the system server. Of, and we have any kind of application and access uh, to this data to analyze it and to make any decision and to set our reaction on actions to protect the environment in the, in the field. So as I said, for the maritime, uh, maritime port, we have also uh, the use of drone assisted monitoring or applications. And now the problem is how we can collect all this information and to bring it to the internet uh, of uh, to the internet or internet of things which wireless technology we should we call it backhauling of wireless uh, sensor networks all that for us are wireless sensors and we have to backhaul them with the internet to the server so here there are some widely used technologies or one of the possible technologies. I will go to our short, it will not uh, uh, use a lot of time. We have satellite, it is this available everywhere, but just it costs so much, especially if we need broadband services. 2G and 3G, yes, they are low cost, but the problem, a lot of uh, mobile operators are switching, off, uh, switching them off because they are uh, too expensive in operation and management. And also they are very bad in what we call spectral efficiency, uh, measured in how much bit rate can we transmit bit rates per second per hertz. Therefore, they switch off these technologies and use the frequencies for 4G and in the future will be used for 5G. We have 5G, but we have a lot of delay in to have in a massive deployment because of the economic crisis and also some problems with the leadership, with the leader in the mobile, uh, man, uh, mobile system manufacturers, the Chinese company Huawei, and we have the, that there is some political and economical confrontation there. WiMAX, it is a nice uh, solution with broadband, but the standardization and the evolution has been frozen 10 years ago, so that they missed the opportunity to go uh, with evolution of a new innovative IoT application. Because of that, we cannot expect a lot of flexibility and adaptability for new services. And then we have low power wireless area network, which is the concept. And two, um, uh, and two a level products in the market, LoRa, One, and Sigfox. They are uh, one uh, very adapted for IoT, and they have long coverage, very low energy consumption, and last side spectrum. But their weak problem is that we can have no broadband capacity, just only for very short packets of IoT. That means we will have no camera support of camera services or video services, and we will have no support for drones, assisted operation. Therefore, I will not uh, read all the advantages. Therefore, we'll go for 4G, which, uh, uh, we, which has a very nice success story worldwide. We have 4G everywhere, very flexible capacity, and has been adapted for machine-to-machine -machine communication, and then adapted for narrowband IoT LTE. Well, for, from my point of view, and with more details in the paper, it is the adequate solution. Sorry, Mr. Uh, Aydin. Sorry, Mr. Yes. Aydin, you have two minutes left. Okay, then, uh, sorry, I go for the Moroccan case. We have one maritime port. It is uh, the um, important port for a Moroccan economy. They have the similar challenges like any uh, port, but with two, uh, with very hard problem. So the Greenpeace and NASA, they have calculated that sport was responsible for 113,000 tons of sulfur dioxide emission in just one year. Furthermore, we detected the pollution of littoral with cadmium, copper, zinc, and chromium. I am not a biologist, but just I make just short uh, research for cadmium. It is very dangerous substance. It is responsible for label destroy uh, the, the for liver diseases and also for cancers. So, and uh, the, what is the uh, worst uh, case? Because we have also in the neighborhood the agriculture, breed farm, and fishing. What we propose is that we make kind of uh, environment control on yard to protect the health of workers and the neighborhood to protect water, sea life, agriculture, product, and habitat. The technical solution we propose this uh, uh, air monitoring devices 
I will not go with details, but we propose to follow standards. I, I like the German standard from German Environmental Federal Agency, guidelines catalog. It is for emission and emission. Emission, it is the measure of pollution in the source, at the source. And emission, it is the measure of the pollution and in the, at the reception, for example, for uh, vegetables and agriculture, we will measure them in the field. And we propose to have 30, 360 degree to have really a green, uh, good analysis of the distribution of pollution in all environments. And we will propose to have LPW, which is low energy consumption and long range coverage. We will have to go very far to all these farms here. My last uh, slides about, I call it the global picture, so that we propose to have this 30, 300 uh, degree uh, air pollution monitoring based on LPWA. It is, it is cellular uh, architecture point to point. We will have no wireless sensor, or no communication between these nodes. We will have drones and camera assisted, uh, cameras and camera assist drones to control uh, bush fires in the neighborhood. We will have also drones assisted operation for hard uh, trash monitoring and the detection of oil and chemical leaks, which is a very the dangerous problem in our region. And then cluster of uh, sensors to monitor and irrigation of green, uh, green zones or green areas. We'll we'll, we can have more monitoring, but it just the basic one, it is to have to control the uh, humidity uh, level of the vegetables so that not will not die easily because of the heat. So I conclude my, uh, my presentation. So the smart port is the key concept to cope with challenges fa facing maritime ports. Unfortunately, environment monitoring and protection was not explicitly included in the current models and definitions from literature. Smartport is an Internet of Things layer model. A solid communication layer is necessary to build any smart environment. In our case study, combination of LPWA, LoRa, for example, and 4GE should offer an optimal wireless communication infrastructure for our for the port. As future work, we have three tasks: data traffic modeling and simulation and signal coverage and water to see what is the effect of water and wave services on the radio propagation. And the uh, last point is the techno-economic aspects to see, can we go all for all LPW or should we only uh, include uh, narrowband IoT with the 4G, with broadband 4G and narrowband 4G without uh, doing an extra overlay network based on all P LPWA technology. This was my uh, presentation. I am sorry for consuming some mi extra minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Haydin, uh, for your presentation about the concepts of SmartPod, uh, SmartPod uh, using the <coughs> IoT Internet of Things, where the, the SmartPod is a, an IoT layer uh, platform that case study for the uh, LPWA and uh, 4G and LTA. So now is uh, the Q and A session. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, the participant ask a question. Um, there is one question from the UD Aditya. Could you ask a question? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <coughs> moderator. I would like to ask to uh, Abdul Fattah. Um, yes. yes, it seems to me that uh, you propose to use LPWA, right? LP1 yes. and um, 4G LTE. Uh, do you have any services from Sigfox, for example? Because uh, in Indonesia, we still have some problem with, uh, with uh, LP1 uh, license. That's one thing. And the second one, you also said that um, you propose to have some uh, WSN, wireless sensor network. I mean, are you going to use this solution as well, or are you going to use uh, LP1? Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, uh, for, uh, uh, yes, we propose to use the LPWE. It is used an unlicensed spectrum. It is spectrum which is free, 
but just we have to go to the regulatory, uh, uh, regula telecom regulatory to inform them because when we want to uh, just to receive, we can use the te telecommunication equipment without license. But we want when we want to send information, which will which will make noise for some other systems, we have to declare this for a regu te telecommunication regulatory agency. And, but it, and this is different from one country to another. Uh, from Morocco, we are a little bit following French in this uh, in the strategy. And we are we have no problem because French they have now LPWO covering the whole French territory, and from the two different uh, operators. And for uh, Morocco, it is not a problem. We have just to inform them because unlicensed spectrum. We don't uh, we don't need to buy uh, license to pay for it. Just we have to inform the regulatory. The second your second question about wireless sensor network. Yes. We want to use it for some local, for example, for green areas, we will have an automated irrigation system because Morocco and all Mediterranean, it is very, very hot in the summer, not really summer, from the from March, April, we will have uh, always more than 30 degrees each day. And we have absolutely no rain, not like in Indonesia, it is hot, but there is rain in Morocco or Mediterranean, very hot and there is no rain. And this summer, we have a lot of fire uh, in, uh, in the whole in the Mediterranean area, Greece, Italy, they suffered too much from it. So that we will have clusters to have here the, for the irrigation system. We'll have other monitoring, but just the basic one, it is to measure the humidity. If it is too dry, we, dig, uh, we will uh, uh, activate the irrigation system and we will have a high level of humidity, so we'll stop it. And for that, we need some to declare, to activate this uh, irrigating system with water. We'll have uh, dispersity in the green area, and they are connected with one, uh, uh, let's say, uh, I have it here. Sorry, wait, yes. We'll have the sensors in the green area. We have one central node, the will send the measured humidity levels to the control system or management system. Yes, we have wireless sensor network for cluster or small network and connected over uh, 4G to the uh, system server. I hope I, I answered, I understood uh, and answered the question. Yes, thank you. Okay. Thank you, you did add it here for the question. Uh, now uh, for the second question uh, from the Dr. Arifin Nugroho. Time shows. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, dear Abdul Fattah, I, I just would like to ask you the following. Uh, first of all, uh, I should congratulate for your concept of extending um, uh, whatever in the literature and and uh, applying the IoT uh, for uh, the better betterment of the the ports. Uh, this should be uh, a big step uh, that you. Uh, you are dealing with the applications of the IoT. I, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if you could give some kind of list um, of the uh, applications of the IoT, especially what kind of sensors uh, to be put in which um, in which applications and and <clears throat> because uh, such kind of um, ideas can be applicable to other country as well. And if it is so, then um, in each of the uh, applications, uh, which might not be necessarily same to one and another, um, in terms of the traffic load, I, I just I'm just would like to, to know what sort of um, Air lung involved, or or in terms of maybe uh, data rate or things like that. A second question would be: uh, suppose that you are uh, 
giving an IoT uh, services to various applications and a complex and such a complex uh, site such as a port. Um, and it's all um, environment uh, management and perhaps also some any other management related with maybe uh, the, the flow of goods, uh, things like that. Um, how, how do you assure the trafficability, if I may, the trafficability of uh, the IoT uh, services in such, in such a case that you uh, could have been delivering um, excellently uh, the uh, quality of service to the user? Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you for uh, your question. It is, uh, uh, yes, uh, it is very interesting. Yes, that is, uh, from where I start. Okay, when we talk about I IoT system, as I told you, uh, uh, as I, okay, for IoT, you call, talk about IoT applications. IoT applications in every, it is now, it is paradigm or concept for any smart environment. For example, uh, I, I can uh, uh, I can see what we can use also in the um, in the context of smart port. It is, for example, smart grid. Smart grid for smart port. We have smart lighting for port areas. When the hard light in the and we know how much energy and uh, ample lights we have in the. Uh, ports here and everywhere, and we can use uh, an IoT system to switch on and switch off the, the, the light. We have also microgrid, which is bad on renewable energy for, and for the port is very interesting because, because they can some a lot of energy and they can use a renewable uh, photovoltaic panels on the, or wind energy in the onshore or an offshore. So that uh, the question about IoT application, it is an enormous. And because of that, I wanted to extend it to use some well-known terms on well-known concepts like smart building, and it is not, but applied in uh, another context. I want to bring it to the concept, context of uh, a maritime ports environment. Smart grid, also it is a well-known concept. I want to bring it to the context of the a smart port, e health, etc. So that it is, I want to bring it to what some uh, well smart domains, but now we have to adapt them to the concept or the context of maritime ports. Uh, so I have shown the literature when we processed IoT layered model for marine ocean marine monitoring, and I um, I uh, describe it and I what okay now, but in the maritime port we have another concept and another uh, risk of oil, chemical leaks, et cetera, and let's the, apply them in this context. So that IoT, it is very big, and each part can be have some concrete realization. And now you're a very interesting question. If I have one a communication infrastructure for IoT, any IoT application in the maritime domain and uh, in the maritime ports, until so complex, how can be sure that I, I will deliver the, uh, the required quality of service. Yes, it is an interesting question, and that, uh, and that I am uh, dealing that it is as a perspective to go to the traffic modeling and, uh, and simulation. Traffic modeling and that uh, at this first step, it is very easy. I could see I will not have any concern about quality of service. Why? Because I have one network, LPWO, let's say LoRa network, and at just I have uh, 20 this air pollution monitoring systems, and they are dispatched. For in that, in the first step, because uh, we have very few intelligence and in current maritime ports, and I am talking about my country. In Europe, they have they are very uh, at very advanced level, uh, especially Hamburg and Amsterdam. They are very and also Barcelona. They have high level of uh, uh, innovative IoT. So that my problem that we uh, my proposition is that we go step by step, and we will not have a, because of that. I talk here in the third uh, to see the techno economic aspects. 
because why here I propose to use two networks that is called overlay network, PWA and 4G. And in 4G, we have also two sub networks, one for broadband and one for narrowband. That means it is not one network, they are, they are, but they are the parallel systems. Each one, for example, LPWA for uh, like this uh, marit, uh, this air uh, pollution monitoring, where we have uh, 10 or 20 kilometers to cover. And LPWO has no problem with coverage, but with the capacity, we cannot have a high capacity. Because of that, that will be traffic modeling and to simulation. So it will be not problem, but it is, uh, that's why I want to ask the question. Okay, it will work, but how much other IoT application can we add to this first step to respect always a certain quality of service? And that is for uh, next step, um, because what I see that your question, it is a really very, uh, very, uh, it, uh, uh, it brings in light an important question about quality of service. Thank you, Mr. Heidi. Welcome. Uh, uh, so the time is over. So thank you. Uh, we uh, give a, a applaud for the Mr. Heidi. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, for the next presenter will be. Uh, uh, Mr. George from the uh, India about the intelligent greenhouse cultivation cultivation empowered in IoT ecosystem. The time is yours, Mr. George. Yeah. Thank you. Shall I start my screen? Yes, please. Yeah. The screen is visible, sir. Yes, it's very yeah. clear. Hey, could you, yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, when we're present here, I'm George Princess. I'm from India, um, doing research under the guidance of Kuomal Ma'am in SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Katangulatur, Chennai. Today, I'm going to present my research topic as an intelligent greenhouse cultivation empowered in IoT ecosystem. I have applied for the IEEE Asia Pacific Conference on Geoscience, Electronics, and Remote Sensing Technology. And now I'm going to present all my contents here. Um, the contents were uh, followed by abstract and then, and then introduction. The introductions will show the um, uh, IoT and what are the uh, difficulties you are facing in IoT and the integration of IoT with smart greenhouse cultivation which provides the working of greenhouse with IoT technologies and the convolutional use of greenhouse cultivation technology, which has three types, which has low technology greenhouse, medium technology greenhouse, and high technology greenhouse. And the decision-making applications in smart agriculture, which has sampling of soil and mapping, irrigation, fertilization, pest management, and disease of crops, monitoring the yield and forecasting and harvesting the techniques, and the smart agriculture, we are using various sensors like pH sensor, WT sensor, and uh, sensors, etc. And conclusion, and the conclusions are followed by the references. And the next slide is that abstract. What is IoT? IoT is the Internet of an Internet of Things, which is the network of physical objects which are embedded with sensors, electronic software. Uh, our network connectivity for collecting and exchanging the data. And the role of IoT is that monitors the quality of grains, quantity of grains, difficulties and temperatures and irrigation. Um, then the next one is that greenhouse forming and its technologies. Um, the greenhouse forming is one, greenhouse planting uh, hires only the migrant users due to the lack of effectiveness in technology and by facing the difficulties in controlling the quality. And the next point is that integration is carried out between IoT and greenhouse forming. It has monitors the pesticides and the storage uh, facilities and tags the required products found from each other and prevents the farmers from illegal logging. So these are the abstract I have seen. And the introduction of this research is that uh, the demand for the food is directly dependent on, on the population that attends the difficulties for cultivators to encounter the demand. The greenhouse cultivation is a farming technology which can ensure the social ecological sustainable in future. 
It has this uh, agricultural field of ramification, which are expanding the production, the growth of economic and the change of dietary uh, conditions and overconsumption scheme and the depleting resources of groundwater. The each crop pastures are varying characteristics, which are quantity and quality of crop. The distinct characters are presence of nutrients and various types of soil pastures and process of irrigation flow and the rest resistance to pests that would define the capability of any distinct crop. And the, the, the architecture diagram of this integration of IoT with smart greenhouse cultivation is that we are creating a smart greenhouse cultivation with embedded with IoT devices and we are using many sensors for it. For example, pH sensor, temperature sensor, turbidity sensor, every sensor we are using in this agriculture. And this, based on these sensors, all information specifically go to the base station. From base station, we are getting all the information for, and then the user will get monitor and planning and uh, controlling the pastures according, in, according to the agriculture field. This process is mainly used for human won't need to put mu much effort for the agriculture. They can easily sit and use the mobile phone and, and they can operate it from one place. The next step is that the um, convolutional use of greenhouse cultivation technology. In this process, it defines the uh, lower cost in constructions and, they, and, and it is more versatile for growing the crop and vegetables in any climatic conditions. It has three types, which is lower technology, medium technology, and high technology. The lower technology is nothing but the, the, the agriculture will be doing in our own itself, thing like that. It is a wooden outlet structure. It, we can use in our uh, home upstairs like that itself, with the roof smooth, roof, roof smoothed in plastic. It is colder and temperature. It is cold and temperate zones, and it is a low heating system. It has no ventilation process. Um, the conditions are internally have lower control according to the climatic conditions. It entails the lower cost for installation, and it furnishes the plants and vegetables. And the medium technology for greenhouse cultivation is that it employs the both plastic and glass materials, and is erected by the metal frames. In this technology, it is only it, it is it has various atmospheric climatic conditions, and it fabricates the tropical climatic zones. Um, in this medium technology greenhouse cultivation agriculture, it has two uh, two types, which are hydrophonic and aerophonic. If hydro, hydrophonic means nothing but the what the plants will be grow according uh, according to the water meter. In this technology, uh, it is cultivating the pot plant for decoration. Plants and vegetables, um, plants and vegetables, and then high technology for greenhouse cultivation. The high, uh, high technology uh, greenhouse cultivation is, is it, it requires the galvanized iron frames and glasses for the roof in eruption process. It are, it will absorb all climatic conditions and it uh, it controls the heating system by temperatures and cooling by ventilation and furnace by sensing the climatic conditions. Oh, and then the next one is that it regulates the humidity of the pasture, luminous level of the soil, and carbon dioxide in the greenhouse. It, um, it is a vertical cultivation and it minimizes the lab labor cost by mankind and furnishes the distinct types of vegeta vegetables, flowers, and decorations. The next slide is that distinct sensors in smart agriculture. Yeah, so here they are talking. Uh, here I am going to talk about the many sensors they have been discussed. So the author uh, Yufara Safi et al. Um, has written the has written the paper a multimodal approach for crop wealth mapping using a low altitude remote sensing method by using IoT and machine learning methods. Um, he has uh, taken these much sensors: DHT11 sensor, DS18 B20 sensor, capacity soil sensor, volumetric and tensometric sensor. By using these sensors, they have they they have monitored the health of the crop in. Uh, cultivation and and we achieve the real yield status crop uh, can be detected determined. Oh, can be determined. And the next one next author is that Rekha P et al. Uh, uh, she describes the paper uh, sensor based wastewater, wastewater monitoring for agriculture using IoT was published in the year 2020 and then and the and the paper they are described about pH sensor, turbidity sensor Temperature sensor and TDS sensor. By using these sensors, um, 
she has get in, uh, she has estimate the quality of water and she generate an alert alert message to the user so that the user gets to know the information about the agriculture so the remedy the advantage of this uh, paper is that the remedial measures can be taken by alerting business and sales or increase for the farmers and the next paper is that Shan E et al. has described the paper IoT based laser inscript sensor for detection of sulfate in water body. In uh, he was published the paper in 2020 and he was using and he was talking about the flexible sensor and he uh, detects the sulfate ions from the same sample water and he achieves the ranges can uh, ranges can, can be determined. And the next paper is that uh, was written by Carol Andres uh, Gonzal. Amarillo et al. has described uh, as written the paper Internet of Things in Extreme Environments Using Low Power Range, Range Near Field Communication in the year 2018. And he used the paper, uh, he used the sensors as soil humidity sensor, DTH level sensor, temperature sensor, LDR sensor. By using these sensor, he obtains to track and maintain the record of growth stages about seedling and various cultivation products. According to this, he, get, he receives the energy and water resources are reduced in whole cultivation process. And the same like this, the next paper is that uh, towards smart agriculture monitoring using fuzzy systems, they are using the NFC sensor and passive sensor. Um, NFC sensor is used to sense the uh, sensor, it's used to detect up, uh, around the ranges. For example, it's a 10 centimeter ranges you can take. Uh, and the, and the, uh, the objective of this paper is that to monitor and exploit the status and resources and he achieves the power consumptions of sensor to get reduced. And the next paper is uh, sorry, not... sorry to disturb your time. You have five minutes left. Huh? Thank you. You have five minutes left. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So, okay, now I'm going to the next slide. Um, okay, um, my next process is that decision making applications in smart agriculture, which is sampling of soil and mapping, irrigation, fertilizer, managing the pests and disease in crop, and monitoring the yield, forecasting, and harvesting. Sampling of soil and ma mapping is that determining the uh, nutrient level status in the pasture and the nutrient deficiencies has to be determined. And then uh, e for, for yearly basis, the soil has to be tested according to the concerns of weather, neither in spring or winter. Um, the nutrient level in soil can be determined as history of cropping method, applications of fertilizers, level of irrigation and topography. And the uh, irrigation method. Okay, irrigation is the uh, irrigation is water wastage is higher that may extend the desertification and would be and bird will be in the shortage of water. Um, uh, so, so for irrigation, we are using drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. In an in irregular irrigation, shortage of water affects the quality and quantity of the crop, which maximizes the water flow. It's it insistigates the microbial infection by minimizing the nutrients in the soil. The challenging task of this irrigation is that the maximizing the efficiency of crop water stress index management. And if I move on to the fertilizer. Fertilizer is the any material of natural or uh, synthetic origin that is applied to soil or to plant tissues to supply the plant nutrients. Fertilization may be distinct from climbing material or other non-nutrient non, uh, non soil embedded. It has many types which are nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium uh, fertilizer, organic and inorganic fertilizers. And the and it smartly will treat the crop diseases and pesticides. The challenges by the pest can be handled and it can be located by the robot with sensing devices and nozzle spraying. Nozzle spraying. And the next slide is that monitoring the yield forecasting and harvesting. Here they are talking about the distinct types of yield monitoring, uh, which is the graining the mass flow, containing the moisture, and harvesting the grain quality. And the level of moisture and predicting the yield of seeds under distinct atmospheric condition. And here they are going to estimate the harvesting time and the farm RTX mobile application to generate the high quality yield map, sharing the map, and estimate the pasture management. So that's that uh, smart agriculture using sensors here they are using um, various sensors uh, and here we are going to talk about smart greenhouse pasture intelligent system soil sampling smart irrigation smart fertilization spotting, dis dis uh, spotting diseases 
smart are risking and pest management. Whereas the smart greenhouse pasture is that it is a farm where the cultivation is possible for all that in 365 days. The livestock will also be included in this pasture, a better or more promising situation. And then intelligent system is the knowledge and understanding of rural people is essential. So soil mapping we have done. Uh, so these are the diagrams. Um, so first we are going to do the seed sowing by using the robot and we are giving it to the soil sampling. And after soil sampling, we are giving the smart irrigation technique. So the water will be uh, taken uh, to the plant uh, as limited level. And then the fertilization using through the robot. And then the uh, if there is any disease and it will be spotted by the robot. And then uh, we will give the uh, specified uh, uh, instructions and will be manage the pesticides and then the smart harvesting has been uh, generated and then the, uh, this the smart genome patches has been uh, obtained. So the user can get, uh, get the information from everywhere by using the intelligence system technology. So the conclusion of this research was that the improvement of smart genos cultivation is through new trends of IoT. Um, it furnishes the different genos cultivation with its associated innovative technology, and it has several distinct sensors which has uh, health status of the crop, maximize the uh, maximize and minimize the power consumption and power reduction, etc. And the uh, researchers are researchers, cultivators, and engineers to enhance the yield of the crop and the and the last point is that the smart greenhouse cultivation faces the major difficulties such as demand of lower cost reliable, major monitoring and transmitting the environment climatic conditions and the same soil conditions securely. Um, these are my references and based on these references, I have started this research. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your nice presentation, uh, Mrs. George Princess. So mm -hmm. I will conclude the presentation that the use of the technology for the uh, greenhouse cultivation, cultivation that you this use the decision making for the soil mapping, irrigation, fertilizer, and for the monitoring yield forecasting and harvesting. Uh, so now the time for the Q and A session. Uh, I would like to uh, ask the participant to ask some question. Time shows. So, if there is no question, I would like some uh, to ask the question about your uh, research. So, uh, how you? Uh, uh, about your decision making, how accurate you will decide for this uh, method for the IoT for the greenhouse uh, technology that you use. Uh, thank yeah, you very I much. Can I answer, sir? Yes. Um, based on my uh, research, um, based on my existing paper, I am going to uh, uh, set one threshold values, and based on this that threshold value, I'm going to implement my process. Just now I have started my research so that I am uh, started learning all uh, many papers to get the uh, information. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So give a hand, big hand for the his, uh, Mrs. George Princess for the his, uh, for her research. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank okay, you. for the since the second presenter and uh, the third presenter is not uh, come yet at this moment, I will give to the Abdul Salam Baryun to give the presentation right now. The time is yours, Mr. Bar uh, Abdul Salam. Hello, Mr. Abdul Salam. Are you here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. And could you please present your presentation? Thank you. Okay. okay. Share, uh... Uh, I will introduce the uh, talk about the so you will be present about the evaluating data speed for 5G mobile technologies using queuing models. Okay, uh, uh, Abdul Salam is from Libya, so now the time is yours. Thank you very much. OK, 
Okay, could you see the presentation? Yes, it's very clear. Could you make the slide presentation? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Good. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the committee of the conference uh, Edgers uh, 2021 and uh, all uh, member participants. Uh, uh, my name is Abdul Salam Baryun. It's uh, the, the title of the paper is Evaluating Data Speed for 5G Mobile Technologies Using Queuing Models. Uh, paper was uh, authored uh, by me and uh, Dr. Khaled Ben Hamid at University of uh, Tripoli. Five, uh, 5G main application areas uh, uh, is uh, uh, or, or uh, can be categorized in uh, three as enhanced mobile broadband, uh, massive machine type communication, and uh, ultra reliable and low latency communication. So, uh, and usually it's very important to be uh, having a reliable uh, communication for some applications, uh, which uh, is related to uh, human safety or uh, as uh, we have in this conference, we are having important data which may be in a disaster situation or may involve uh, uh, people's life. So uh, to have uh, uh, correct information, correct data and analyze very correctly, uh, 5G was able to, to do this uh, 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 with, with its uh, requirements for its uh, 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 character. Uh, but uh, as we know, uh, now uh, most, most uh, or, or in, our, in Libya or in our most countries, uh, they are already uh, use, using now 4G, which uh, we are uh, now starting in Libya to uh, install the 5G, which has more uh, services and more uh, integration between uh, device or applications and technologies. So uh, uh, in our department and the University of Tripoli, we are looking at the performance uh, and, uh, and how uh, as a technology uh, or uh, at, at uh, the end user, at the user, which is important for uh, most applications or all applications are targeting the customer, which is the user or the human being. And also in the, the conference, looking at uh, uh, remote sensing or uh, uh, data gathering and analyzing and giving information or giving the knowledge or uh, specific, uh, has a specific uh, application important for, uh, for let's say a service, uh, one kind of service. So uh, the speed is very important. The speed, uh, the time is, uh, is uh, is important to, to give a good quality of self at the end user, because waiting some time may mean somebody loses his life or some kind of information uh, uh, may affect uh, service. And I think uh, one of the speakers yesterday mentioned some of kind of information and analyzing and uh, or context aware situations or applications that has context aware. And so 5G is important and we, we focused on the high speed or uh, latency, not much on the reliability for now, but usually also in the, uh, the high speed or the high, I mean high reliability is important usually in the, uh, the, the, these kinds of applications or the applications that covered by 5G. But I think most of you already know these areas as like introduction, mobile technology performance. Now we are looking at three uh, technologies in this paper. Usually because it's available in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, at the end user and uh, for the future, uh, inshallah, uh, we will have 5G. Uh, so we have uh, Wi-Fi, so we targeted three, the, the Wi-Fi and uh, uh, 4G and 5G as Technologies used at the, 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 the mobile or the mobile is, is that's a car for uh, a user using a device or a mobile device. 
So usually the performance uh, we look at that it affects it's, it's affected for the performance by the physical layer or the physical and access technology. Usually they are different and using the physical, these three technologies, using uh, the technology, the access technology and uh, the physical and having communication and computing in their level. Also, the, the use in 5G or the also not in the infrastructure, uh, in the network, the mobile edge computing using uh, servers which are closer and have the information and have the ability to analyze the data at close to the end user or the, uh, uh, the, 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 the client who needs the service. Uh, and also the network performance is important for uh, uh, this technology or the, at the end user, if the network is busy or it's uh, having, having a problem in its architecture, it will affect his, uh, and we have this problem in Libya very much uh, uh, because of some uh, uh, problems in the network, so it affects uh, the, the service at all. And then the network load also, increasing the network load gives a very uh, bad uh, uh, performance at the end user, while uh, as we know that there is limits for the load per area and the per uh, uh, for if the disaster happens, everybody is using this infrastructure or 5G or 4G, which is having uh, as a cellular network. Uh, uh, it will it will be uh, uh, he will have no uh, no service. So uh, usually uh, the the the, the the, the network load is, is an important factor, even though we didn't uh, focus on it in this paper. But uh, in future, inshallah, we will look at it. Mobility uh, also is the high mobility. As increasing uh, mobility, uh, there will be disconnection between the links uh, because we are having a wireless technology as uh, Wi-Fi and uh, 4G and 5 So the mobility is a very important factor in, uh, in performance. We have the, the three the technologies already mostly, I think most of you may already know it, but here we look at the, the delay or the end-to-end -end delay, which involves the networking, uh, delay, the delay, uh, queuing delay or uh, uh, the processing, uh, about 70 milliseconds in Wi-Fi and 4G, 5.4 milliseconds and 5. This data is already uh, in the references. <clears throat> The case study, uh, we are looking at uh, paper, the case study as an example can be uh, a mobile or a car or uh, any device as we mentioned, as already mentioned, and let's say this conference has uh, drones or uh, uh, kind of mobility uh, or mobile satellite communication, this kind of uh, running at 100 kilometers per hour will move uh, the device will move about 27.6 meter every second. So a second, one second is very short time. And uh, if we get a response in a second is good as a service maybe, or less than a second, we may not recognize that there was, took a delay, but still the movement is important. Here you will move, uh, this device will move 27 meter, a large amount of space. Or he already moved, and there, if he didn't get that kind of information, it may be affecting the situation. Situation is is different, different situation. So uh, uh, this one is one uh, important example of case. Also, the delay in networking and queuing to reach the server. Actually, you, you, when you want is you need a server. Either you you need to get data from some kind of servers. Either, either it's, uh, it's a sensing server, which are the sensing and getting and analyzing. You know, there are kind of servers that take time also in the network. So having the uh, this technology, MEC, mobile edge computing, as servers closer to the end user and updating and storing this information, analyzing and giving to to the needed needed most needed uh, uh, area is very important. Sorry, the queuing uh, model we use. Yes. So, sorry, your time is uh, five minutes left. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, the queuing models we looked at are three. Uh, this uh, MM1 has one server and one queue, 
uh, one Q and the second one, no, second model is one Q and th three, uh, three servers, as we have three technologies, Wi-Fi and 5G and 4G, and also having four Q or hybrid between the two models, as we've seen. Here we can see also the, as I, I, uh, I put here as two cars, but we can look at it as, as two, uh, either two networks or two different technologies running in space and, and time and space. Uh, and any, uh, any uh, delay or any, it will affect the situation. So here we have two in the model, I've done so using MATLAB uh, application. And uh, we have two, uh, I've, uh, uh, one server and two queuing. We use the uh, first in, first out, or uh, uh, first serves. And the second the model was uh, having the three servers and one queuing, uh, queuing uh, uh, storage. Or, and the third model was has a hybrid, which each server already has uh, storage. And we done our uh, uh, results. Uh, <clears throat> this is the results of the service time. Uh, usually we use the, 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 the load was only one user, but uh, in future we will use more uh, increasing the load. And, and uh, the packet uh, uh, the packet size was about 1000 uh, uh, bytes. And uh, the queuing time, uh, usually we see in the first queuing, the queue is always larger, gets in the first uh, milliseconds will be larger. And uh, then in the second queue is less. Uh, this, uh, the, uh, this is the queuing. Also in, uh, in the, the, the second model, we have uh, the service time uh, for the first uh, uh, for first server and then the second uh, server. Uh, the, usually the second server gets the better uh, service time, uh, has the better. Uh, usually also in the 5G is a very low uh, service time, but uh, it's already known because of its uh, high speed. Uh, service time for the model the number three also give uh, better uh, per, uh, performance because having queuing for in the three uh, uh, three uh, uh, the, the three uh, the hybrid model uh, for <clears throat> the conclusion uh, using uh, MEC technology and also the three uh, the, the, the three technologies for uh, for the end user or as the best data speed and less packet losses or packet delay. Future work uh, will increase uh, uh, system load. Uh, we, we will try to increase and check the performance, including higher number of users and limiting uh, also the queuing time. We, in our the paper, we made it infinity. So we may uh, limit it usually in some devices or mobile device has limit uh, uh, queuing. And these are the references. And thank you. Uh, uh, thank you all. And Allah bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Abdul Salam Baryun, for your nice presentation. Uh, now I would like to ask the audience to ask some questions. Okay, uh, Dr. Yudi Aditya, uh, please, time is yours. <coughs> Thank you. Assalamualaikum, uh, Baryun. Um, I have uh, some questions. Number one, uh, do you really have 5G in your country? Because, uh, um, I mean, the, in some countries, 5G has some regulations, which is not, uh, um, <clears throat> has some problems with the regulations, for example, radiations and also coverage. So how is the status of 5G in your country? And uh, number two, because Libya is also a big country with uh, separate uh, areas, for example, the, the Eastern with Benghazi and the, Western part in Tripoli, right? Uh, you have so many spotty areas, right? Uh, do you really think 5G is the needed solution for your country or is it better to have uh, white coverage, for example, by using LP1 or other kind of solutions? Or, uh, or in other words, is it is it better to have higher speed with low latency by using 5G or is it better to have Wider, co wider coverage, but with lower, uh, I mean, with lower bandwidth. What do you think? Because I think we have the same problem in your country in uh, Libya, in Indonesia. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for your questions. 
Uh, I agree with you for the, the, and the 5G technology is, uh, is, is, is not uh, uh, available for us, but uh, we have uh, uh, one company, Al, Al Madar company, it's, uh, it started uh, investing in this uh, uh, technology. Uh, they didn't give us much information, but they are saying that they are uh, 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 working with Huawei to 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 to, to install this uh, technology and uh, uh, and uh, test it. You know, but uh, it's not uh, it's not covered. And we are now using only 4G and Wi-Fi usually as a, as a users, uh, but so, uh, and also it's installed in all Libya. Uh, uh, so, so it's correct, but on the same time, uh, there are some countries already they installed uh, 5G and already uh, they tested it and used it. Uh, but uh, in Libya, uh, we are looking at it, and uh, actually, I'm uh, I'm from uh, the university, so usually in the industry they are a little uh, critical. They don't give much information, but we are trying to as university to look at the close uh, uh, teamwork uh, to see how this technology will help the user and uh, our uh, people's life and how to integrate it also to go to the second question. The thing is in the 5G, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's the backbone for also integrating other technologies. So as we see, there is uh, a lot of papers in IEEE talking about 6G, and the 6G involves the satellite communication or the big coverage using also other uh, uh, technologies for covering not only satellite, also uh, covering with other, uh, as we have the drones or the, the HAP or the, 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 the like balloon uh, covering a city or something like that. Uh, so this kind of uh, uh, coverage is important, yes, and uh, also in Libya we already are separated they have we have a satellite network covering uh, uh, some areas which is, uh, is, 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 is but integrating these kind of technologies the 5g will be that like the, the the gateway or the backbone for this uh, so that's uh, why i i'm looking at 5g and uh, it's, it's uh, as integrating these technologies uh, with having a high speed and will help if there is a let's say a problem with the network, high load, these kind of uh, problems will affect the 4G uh, network, but the 5G is different, and also it's able to be more developed than the, and its technology to to involve satellite and uh, so I I, uh, I think I hope I answered the question. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, uh, for the second uh, question from the Dr. Arifin. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 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 Mr. Barrio. Um, yes, hi, Doctor. Yes, sir. Uh, I just would like to uh, ask you regarding the model, the, the traffic model that um, you are proposing uh, to what extent um, in the 5G environment uh, you are uh, proposing still Markovian things uh, because you got MMC, MM1, M and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, and, and I'm just curious only. Uh, if uh, it is really um, valid, it's okay. But uh, do you think there is a, a what you call it, some kind of um, uh, research being being made, and in that in that in that effect um, regarding uh, the valid model for the traffic for five G uh, as you have proposed? Secondly. Um, uh yeah uh i, I should also con con congratulate uh libya for having so decided that 5g will be using i think five gigahertz right uh so this is a, a great step uh, at least you have been um determined 
to to use uh, uh, to uh, to allocate um, uh, frequency band. And some other areas, it's rather difficult because uh, there are so many controversies and and using this or that kind of band. And especially uh, if we are talking about three point uh, three around 3.5 or things like that, which is, um, you know, um, having a, a sweet, severe problem with the satellite community. So um, that's great if you, you, you got already, but uh, make sure that the spectrum or the bandwidth availability will be um, enough to take care of uh, the traffic being generated. And thirdly, um as you know that in the ITU uh and the in the ITU are um uh community I believe that right now people are talking uh on the utilizations of high attitude platform system or HAPS, uh kind of airship which um flow aloft the altitude around 20 kilometers. And this actually uh, is being uh, uh, more and more uh, discussed. And uh, I, I see that uh, there is a hubs, uh, hubs associations, um, even um, is getting a strong, stronger and stronger voice uh, around uh, the use of, of hubs uh, at, one, uh, at the end of the day to replace, uh, to replace the uh, terrestrial 5G network in some way because, because I believe that uh, for such a very, very high, I mean, uh, uh, high, uh, high speed, uh, high speed, it's going to be very, very challenging if we are having a, a, a bigger uh, range, bigger range of cell, correct? So in other words, if you are to, to cover a certain area, then uh, you end up uh, of uh, erecting more and more towers. And this uh, may become a problem uh, from also from the aesthetical point of view, uh, I, I, I believe uh, that there will be some kind of a challenge. Um, uh, not to not to speak about uh, uh, that just been uh, asked by Dr. Judy just now that um, there is some kind of uh, unresolved problem or unresolved uh, questions regarding uh, the uh, the what you call it, uh, the relation between uh, uh, strong radiations with cancer and so on and so forth. So um, I think with the hubs, with hubs, uh, it may alleviate certain, uh, certain difficulties in, uh, uh, in developing uh, 5G and beyond perhaps. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, regarding uh, uh, the model, uh, yes, I, uh, actually we uh, we are also thinking. I, I agree with you. The the, the models we use is uh, it's more uh, simp uh, simplest. Uh, but uh, as I told you that uh, we didn't look at uh, increasing the load in the network. So I think this uh, modeling is okay. Having uh, just a, a small uh, use of the servers, but I'm looking at how one user or two users, small amount of users using these technologies. So how I model it, I look at a, a simple model. If I'm going to increase, yes, I agree. Uh, but uh, I, I hope I can discuss with you more about this as uh, <laughs> it's good to have a, a discussion with all uh, uh, people or uh, to, to, to improve uh, the, the, the work. Uh, second question regarding 5G. Usually, I I, I was I, I also titled it as mobile technologies or 5G technologies, but uh, I am looking I separate a little between the cellular network as a cellular coverage, 
the way it's covering uh, the, the, the service or the area is different as how uh, the HAP cover. But you may use uh, uh, the 5G technology in other way of coverage or other way, but changing the frequencies, the antennas, or uh, that's the physical layer situation. But going to the uh, MAC layer and uh, the networking protocols, uh, it, it can be similar, but the physical layer, it's just coverage, you know, it's antennas and uh, uh, this is uh, as also for the 6G, they are looking at uh, fixing all the kind of the networking layer or the above layer, the application layer, and uh, the change is only is in the physical layer at the way of coverage. Uh, regarding the HAP, uh, as uh, uh, the HAP is very important, also I'm looking at uh, the next uh, 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 conference for the, this. I, I like this conference. So uh, next one, I'm looking at to, to submit the paper about satellite and the HAP applications that will benefit the both sides and using, uh, if there is a possibility of using 5G, uh, that will be good. I'm not uh, uh, too much for uh, this kind of technology, but it's uh, but it's a challenge or it's, a, it's an opportunity. And if uh, it's good for our health or it's good for the, the country, it will be uh, discussed and to be good. So I agree with you. HAP is a very, uh, it's a, for the, the disaster situations, uh, to have a uh, HAP uh, technology or uh, HAP uh, coverage is very uh, best solution, best solution because you can launch it and uh, cover the area. And, uh, uh, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Afran. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Salam Baryun, <clears throat> because the time is over. So we would like to ask the third presenter back to the third presenter that missed before. So I would like to ask uh, uh, Seta Raman or the representative about the, pap uh, the paper, the design of speech device software using optical character recognition method. Is it uh, present today? Yes, sir. The, I am Tarun. I am presenting the modules. Okay, uh, the time is yours for 15 minutes. Yes, okay, sure. thank you. Is it visible, sir? Yes, it's visible. I'm Tarun. So design of speech device software using character recognition method. And this is my agenda. And this is basically converting any type of text, any type of PDF or document into text and displaying the ones. So, and uh, converting any type of PDF or document into a text and that text will be uh, loaded into the TTS synthesizer, which is text to speech synthesizer. And using Google API, we are converting that into an audio form and that will be uh, presenting in a, a artificial uh, voice, which is in difference from the normal human voice. And in optical character recognition, image acquisition, image segmentation, pre-processing and recognition methods are undergone and converted into the uh, text. And next, the, the TTS module text preserved by the OCR framework will, will be taken care. And inside the TTS synthesizer, there will be two processing. One is digital signal processing and a natural influence processing. And this task has an inbuilt camera. So from which uh, this will be scanned and recognized and converted into text. And how the text are converted into speech is by uh, the text will be image processed and uh, respective ASCII values are uh, done and that ASCII values are converted into the uh, speech using FLIT library and that FLIT library converts into an audible form and that uh, audio will be played by the uh, media player. This will be useful for the uh, in many applications and for the visually challenged persons. And these are our design strategies. This is the optical, uh, the optical character recognition. So already I informed that 
various sorts of reports for example examine the pdf documents pictures caught by will be accessed as a text as editable and accessible so it extracts the important information as well as it's not only used for converting the into speech it's also used to convert into a, a pdf one uh, when it is in a normal physical type and we have uh, using convolutional neural networks there are several layers which will be explained later uh, so a convolution layer is a profound neural organization that works on handling information that is in lattice like geography and works based on the topology and a straightforward cnn is a succession of layers and each layer of convolutional neural organization changes one volume of acquisition move to a differential capacity and this is the speech to text synthesizer sorry text to speech synthesizer in which the text uh, from the ocr is loaded into the speech synthesizer in which a national processing and national language pro natural language processing is done first because uh, every uh, language will have a uh, accent and uh, the speech must be converted later to the natural language processing rather than a robot voice so we are first implementing with the natural language processing and then it is loaded into the digital signal processing so in which ocr permits cts devices to pursue text resounding from pictures a text to speech synthesizer depends on producing comparing sound yield when the text is uh, inputted and digital signal processing produce the desired output which is in the form of audible form that is speech and we have used the Google Text API where there are a lot of APIs, but we have choose the Google Text API be mainly of its an open source and it's maintained by Google, which is a secured one and it will be updated. And it's very simple to utilize the library which changes over the text into a sound document in which uh, uh, each text uh, ASCII value will be found and that related ASCII value uh, audible file will be related and the final output will be produced and this works based on cloud and we are, can look into the convolutional neural network so there are uh, five layers so the first layer is uh, input image will be processed and then uh, in the second layer the maximum pooling is done where a map is created and that map is passed on to the third layer in which uh, image dimensionality will be reduced uh, without the loss of important information and the fourth layer is the flattened layer which is which is the uh, layer before the fully loaded layer and we have here the straighten is a capacity that changes over the pool include guide to a solitary section and is passed to the completely associated layer in that associated layer it is passed as a feature map to a single vector and that single vector from a fully loaded layer is passed to the neural network and in the neural network the final uh, is process final uh, final output is processed where we are taken 100 images and 50 times we are repeating for the better accuracy in the initial stage the accuracy will be low and the loss will be high and after performing several times that which with the help of like machine learning we can achieve a maximum accuracy and with the minimum losses so and here the pre-processing so how it's done first the input is the input image is loaded that image will be changes into the grayscale from rgb how it's been the foreground uh, pixels will be set to 255 and the background uh, images pixels will be set to zero uh, where the uh, next uh, uh, next dilation and uh, dilation and eroded will be performed on the images in dilation, our pixels will be added to the boundary of the objects and in erosion, a removal of boundary images. So this will make better uh, clarity for the uh, camera to process and to detect. And then de skewing is done. While we writing a natural uh, letters, we will be writing in a slanting manner. So de skewing is the most common way of fixing a picture in a straight manner and then uh, we apply the ocr and after applying the ocr that output will be loaded to the text to speech synthesizer and the natural processing and digital signal processing is done and after that it is loaded into the gts 
which is based on the Python library and in which it is the desired text to speech output in an audible form will be uh, displayed. And this is our results and discussion. Uh, previously, I informed that we have performed nearly uh, 50 times because in the initial stage, we get an uh, accuracy of less than 0 0.4. And after 10 times, we repeated it uh, reaches to more than uh, nearly a 9, 0 0.9 accuracy. So after that, it's been saturated as well as the loss is being reciprocal where the initial stages there are high losses more than 10 after the 10 uh, repetitions the losses becomes less than 0 0.5 and it gets uh, saturated over to 50 times and this is the conclusion and the text is depends mainly on the distance how we how far we place the uh, text before the uh, camera if we kept too long it's uh, uh, difficult to uh, uh, difficult to capture and process and the lightning plays a major role and it's optimal without uh, in a dim light uh, the processing is is being difficult and this has various applications and not only in a uh, visually challenged per uh, persons even in item label recognition in shopping automated news readers faster reading and reviewing of academic papers such kinds of and we and the future purpose and the future scope of this project is to implement in multiple languages and to use uh, several uh, filters for the more accuracy even if it is a low quality image we have to process in an accuracy level. So here uh, the quality also plays a major role in future scope we are uh, we are going to perform with the low light and with the less uh, uh, quality of image. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your nice pre presentation. Uh, Tarun, uh, you talk about the from the text PDF and the scanner image, uh, then you uh, convert to the optical character recognition yes. using the methodology of the CNN. So yes, that's a, a nice presentation. So I would like to uh, send a, a, to the floor about the, the participant. Do you have some question from the participants? So if no, I would like some uh, like to uh, Dr. Arifin, so the time is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman, and thank you for uh, excellent presentation of Mr. Tarun. Thank um, you, sir. Just, just only uh, one small question regarding um, we have been talking about a new neural network, correct? Yeah. Yes. And sir. so, um, what, what uh, lead what actually, uh, what things lead you to such kind of um, of choice of algorithm? Um, uh, do you think um, it is well? Uh, um, it is a certain a, a certain rational behind, or or uh, maybe relating with logistic or. Uh, or what actually? Uh, because as as far as yes, as I know, uh, everything about the artificial intelligence is kind of buzzword, buzzword. Um, uh, it's not necessarily that the uh, the what you call it, the existing algorithm can cannot work. Uh, actually, it can, but uh, but uh, sometimes I'm I'm puzzled myself. Oh, uh, why? Uh, Almost everybody is is um, suffering for this this kind of <laughs> choice. So uh, you may wish to uh, explain to us. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, your question is uh, why there is need for convolutional neural networks in spite of artificial intelligence, right, sir? Uh, no, no. I, I I consider that neural net neural. Is yes, kind sir. of uh, you know within the family of uh, artificial intelligence itself. So yes, uh, I'm just wondering uh, if there are any uh, you know any conventional algorithm which uh, uh, still works properly, but uh, because of maybe 
uh, you know, uh, certain logistic to some components or things like that, which yes. uh, might uh, hamper you to, to uh, you know, to, to use the conventional one. Yes, uh, here we have used convolution neural networks and we are uh, approaching for better net, better uh, neural, better uh, methods to improve more accuracy. So the, that will be our future uh, scope that we are searching for better networks, uh, better convolutional one for the more accuracy yeah, and less. And for the uh, minimum of losses here, uh, we are uh, doing uh, 10 repetitions and after the 10 uh, repetitions, we are getting uh, better accuracy. So we are hoping for much more better uh, methods and algorithms uh, to uh, perform better accuracy in the initial uh, uh, repetitions. How do you compare about the compute computational works? I mean, a load, computational loads, if you compare uh, your approach with with other, other way of doing things? Uh, yes, sir. we will be performing and we will be getting the results and by comparing with each one, we can, from the graph, we can, uh, we can say things which will be better from the graph. Okay, so good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank sir. you. So uh, the question, uh, second question will be Dr. Abdul Salam. I'm sure. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Tarun, uh, for your uh, presentation. Uh, I'm interested. Uh, to, yeah, I'm interested to know the the hardware uh, used. Uh, let's say the processors, uh, uh, number of processors, or the speed of the processor, the uh, the architecture, computing architecture. Uh, or, or even small specification. I didn't see the paper, so I don't know if it's uh, available. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, we, uh, we have used the several filters. Uh, with uh, In the first convolution lay layers, we have used nearly uh, 60 filters and with a size of uh, 5 to 5. And in the second convolution layer, we have used the 40 filters. And uh, in every layers, we have used the minimum of 30 filters. So these are the one I missed to tell about the configuration of the layers. And the hardware we have used is uh, not uh, pretty much high. Uh, high. Uh, it's it's, it's a, a little bit cost effective one. That answered to your question. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, usually there is uh, sometimes usually it's uh, either it's uh, because this kind of uh, work uh, needs, uh, let's say, the time. Okay, the processing time and uh, uh, is it uh, usually they use serve, uh, maybe it's a number of servers in university to process this uh, and the amount. Uh, let's say it depends on the amount of uh, volume of uh, of, uh, yes, of the data. Yeah, but. I just, if it's on a normal computer, it's okay. I just, is it, if this work is done, this algorithms and this analysis uh, or this uh, uh, work was done on a normal computer, just uh, just to know that. Yes, I, it, it, it works in uh, real time and it depends on the size and dimension of the images. Yes, you are correct that it depends if the image is too big and if the image is too big, the image contains many lines, it takes uh, quite time. And if, if the image contains less words, it will be processed in a very, uh, in a real time. So the whole process is working in a real time manner. There is a delay between uh, if an image is with less words and more words, there is a delay. Okay, because the time is over, uh, now it's at the end of the session. Sorry for the other speaker who would like to ask some questions. Maybe we can uh, ask the directly to our committee. Uh, so now it's the end of the session. Would you like to uh, show your uh, in picture uh, in the Zoom? We would like to... Uh, have a group uh, photo this this uh, this uh, this room. Yes.
Uh, for the committee, could you please uh, take a photo together? Uh, okay, Mr. Iqbal. Uh, okay, I will count. One, two, three, smile. And the next page. One, two, three. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, have to return to the main room uh, for the result of the best paper awards uh, for uh, for the presenter and the student uh, award. So could you please to uh, go back to the main room? Thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, uh, can I know how to go to the main room? Uh, we have to exit and have to join. How are you, Dr. Arifem? How are you? <laughs> we still are in the room. I cannot hear you. <laughs> Good to see you, eh, doctor. <laughs> I cannot hear you still. You open the mic. Oh, yeah. yes. Sorry, sorry. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Rafani. I'm anxious wondering what language do you speak in Libya? Uh, we speak Arabic, Arabic language, yeah. So like um, like in Morocco, for example, people uh, speak also French. Yes, yes, speaks, uh, we have English usually, English uh, and a little bit uh, Maybe if you know Italy, because we were invaded by Italy before. <laughs> but oh, uh, that yeah. because in Morocco and uh, Algeria and Tunisia, I think they have been invaded before by these countries, uh, like France, you know. Oh, uh, so yeah. they have some kind of culture. They know uh, they started to teach. They then some schools and and then they started. Uh, it's good to have more language. Yeah. <laughs> But we usually it was uh, Eng Eng England. Your uh, English is good. Uh, no. I try to study French, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Do you know other languages? Uh, yes, I speak. Uh, I speak French a little bit because uh, uh, I I did my PhD in in Ren in in Brittany. <laughs> So I speak a little bit French, not 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 much, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it is very nice to have um, uh, expert from uh, from well uh, 
from Africa as well as from other uh, other part of Asia. It it, it is uh, exciting. So um, yes. we we can we can we can interact uh, more closely in in, yes. the, in the future. I think. Yes, I agree with you. Yes. I hope I can get uh, in the future. I will try to send you an email to get in contact with you. Oh, please. Because please, please. I seen also your presentation yesterday. It was very interesting for me also. And uh, also your uh, uh, other uh, colleagues. Yeah, that was uh, amazing. I, I think this is the best conference I, I've been to. I've been to oh four, about four conferences, two in the UK. Two in UK and uh, uh, two here in Libya. I uh, know one in Libya, one only one I believe in Libya. Uh, but uh, I think uh, your conference was the best <laughs> until now. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, I mean uh, the, the the simplicity and uh, everything is clear and uh, and uh, they talk to you. They tell you what should be done and very quickly responds by email and. Uh, it's uh, simple, yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, actually, um, uh, the, the the man behind the, the gun is the team. Uh, the team of uh, of the Brin. Brin is uh, our organi organization for research, national research uh, in Brin, Indonesia. Yeah, Brin. Research, yeah, yeah. B B R I N B R I N. Uh, that that is the key <laughs> because they yes. they mobilize uh, young people they mobilize young people very nicely and we cooperate to one another <laughs> just uh, I, th uh, people I think like you're the you're the head of this uh, organ uh, print, huh? you're the you're no 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 uh, no not me no uh, I'm you. only uh, 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 the, the the one who should speak yesterday was absent because of uh, ah, okay. other, other, other occasion. Uh, but um, I'm chairing uh, uh, what you call it? Joint chapter. Joint chapter of IT. Ah, joint okay, joint yes. chapter, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Refen. And I hope we will. Uh, I will send you an email and tell you my what's my interest area. Maybe you can also help me with something uh, ideas. And, sure, sure. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, actually, uh, if you uh, if you may wish to um, uh, send, um, say for example, if there is some some conference in Libya or. In Africa or in Morocco, things like that. Uh, I would be uh, very interested, very much interested uh, okay. in attending. And right now, it is possible using internet. So correct. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. yeah, we had one conference before in May 2021, last May. Yeah, uh, they couldn't organize this uh, uh, remotely. You know that. Uh, uh, far distance uh, conference, uh, it was a disaster. Our technicians, they couldn't, uh, and our, you know, students, they oh. made a mess, you know, and that IEEE oh. conference, it was... <laughs> oh, actually, Even... it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of habit. Uh, I think uh, for the first time, it's okay, but uh, maybe second time, they learn something and get improved. Things, things like that. So uh, I believe that that uh, this is the. I think uh, this is the. Uh, Recording this is stopped. The very nice thing. This is a very nice thing to do, uh, using an internet uh, conference. I think right. this is uh, this is uh, the place where internet uh, uh, work most <laughs> for us. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I will be you. delighted uh, if you could uh, contact contact me, contact us because I, because I got also network be, be, behind me uh, uh, in uh, in uh, especially in telecommunications, but 
also we are interested in regulatory matters and also especially especially right now we are very much interested in in hubs in hubs as well as in yes. the uh, yes. uh, what you call it uh, uh, low earth orbit type of solution for narrow band IOT. Ah, good. You know, my bachelor degree the thesis was about uh, Leo satellite communication oh. yeah, and coverage. Yeah, oh. it was in uh, 1997. Yeah, so that's oh. why I studied also the HAP and I read all the geos uh, orbits, the Mio orbits, the Leo, the Hio, even the Hio. <laughs> All orbits. I read. Uh, I yeah, studied yeah. all orbits. It was a disaster. Yeah. Usually, okay. uh, in bachelor degree, you have that kind of effort. You know. So, actually, also this uh, the next uh, conference. Uh, maybe that's why I, I uh, the the paper that I want to submit re regarding HAPS. I want you to help. Uh, you know, to join me as a co-author, if you don't mind. You oh know? yes. Delight, yeah. We'll be delighted. I'm delighted. Thank so you very much. Let's Thank work you. together. That's let's good. Together. Yeah. So the okay. next paper, so, usually your, your question, uh, you know, remind me of that kind of uh, <laughs> energy. Sorry, don't be upset. <laughs> don't be upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, this paper will be good for uh, Libya and for Indonesia. Both, you know, we we take yeah. that from here and from there. You know, maybe we can do a solution, good solution, uh, for both. Okay. Yeah, for both continents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Arifin, may I join the discussion? Discussion? Yeah, oh, we are. Sure. By the way, at what time we at what time we are uh, we are to reconvene? Because uh, there will be uh, uh, what you call it um, kind of Good. ceremony for delivering the the prize for the best paper. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. It's actually it's right now. Uh, we are supposed to go to back to the, uh, uh, okay. to the main conference. But oh. before before we join the main conference, can I ask something? Especially, yes, I, yes, I'm no. interested in discussion between Pa Arif and and you, brother Bayun, uh, regarding yes. the satellites. Especially the uh, when you when you said that uh, I, you have your bachelor's degree in the uh, satellite communications, right? Yes. Uh, right now, right now, uh, you know that uh, BPPT and uh, we became one big uh, research institute, right? Re research mm. uh, institutions called Brin, right? Uh, yeah. So this is a, this is a combination of five institutions. Uh, one of the institutions is uh, uh, recording in with, progress. One of our institution is tasked with uh, developing microsatellites mm. for communications. Yeah. But now there is a, there is a uh, there is a discussion between should it be microsatellites or even nanosatellites. And because we would like to have uh, originally this um, microsatellite was designed for remote sensing, right? But uh, later on, after discussions with other government institutions, we decided to change the satellite into narrow band, narrow band communication satellite. Originally, this is uh, uh, originally the, the previous satellite was uh, as a repeater for uh, APRS and voice communication for amateur radio. Right. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, do you have any recommendations for this? Uh, uh, well, I yeah, yeah I, I think it's better. Yeah, to have this. Uh, uh, you mean uh, uh, communication satellite, not only remote sensing. Yeah, it's, uh, to have both uh, capabilities is uh, is, uh, is uh, better. But also the problem with uh, uh, these projects is the cost. You know. As engineers, you know, not everything is uh, the, the ideas in science, you know. The cost, what will cost? In the end, why you are thinking if there is no money, you know. Let's say I'm doing now a project. I'm trying to do some 5G because there is money happen now uh, invested. If there is no money, why I should think about some... <laughs> <laughs> This is we, I don't want to waste time, even though most of my time as uh, 
as scientists, or let's say in uh, universities, it goes, you know, it goes, no, you don't get, gain much, you know, or they uh -huh. pay us less, you know, but the thing is, I, I, I agree with you, it's important, but uh, sometimes the the politics and the government they see they say no as in uh, let's say in a cellular network they always had the G1 G2 G3 why G, these uh, these generations because of the the cost they don't want to throw it away so the technology stays because the user and the most who's paying everything they don't want to change their telephone even my telephone I didn't change you know and that's true so even your right. technology, already Indonesia has this satellite. No, don't go through quickly. Don't, you have to use all your, your uh, because the satellite has a lifetime, it dies. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's leave it until it dies. And then we see the cost and the ground and the, and the, air, uh, the space, how, how it will work for you, you know? So, it, it needs, you know, I think uh, business people to look at uh, the cost. They are maybe better than us in engineering. We don't care <laughs> much about money. <laughs> uh, the, okay, the advantage of being the Indonesian is that once, um, I, mean, I mean, most of our satellites depends on, uh, uh, or our communication satellite, we use international satellite, Iridium, for example, and yeah, uh, uh, well, those kind of satellites, you know. The, <clears throat> Uh, we don't have Indonesian Indonesian uh, satellites. We do have, but usually this is limited to banking satellites, right? Uh, yes. uh, one of the problem for the Indonesian government is that we need the full coverage because we have so many uh, we have so many sensors out there. For example, for tsunami sensors in the middle of the oceans, right? <laughs> you don't have any other method, communications method except for the satellites. And the satellite is very costly when we use geostationary. So the government plan to have uh, low orbit satellites, but this is uh, uh, equatorial, equatorial satellite. I mean, circling the yes. equity, equator, right? That's short well, duration, yeah. It doesn't stay yeah. for the link. Yeah, I yeah so low, I mean, uh, by making it uh, low orbit, right? Uh, the the satellite budget, the uh, the power budget, and the uh, the weight and etc. will be lower as well. But the calculation is not finished yet. Mm. Okay, yeah, I agree with you. That's good, yeah. I yeah. think it's important that, okay. uh, you know, these countries that are interested in having a, a, a satellite network, they uh, they cooperate, you know, to have a, a network because these big companies are already using, uh, charging us a lot of money, you know, we can't yes, do it. Yeah. Because if the, the, the satellite is already around, with some countries, they join together and they do it. They don't need a company to pay, they pay government paying private companies, you know, something like that. Yeah. But uh, but it's good that if you are using now this uh, this iridium, it's, it's, it's already you have uh, the experience because we are not using in Libya. You know that's the, no. that's good for you. You know I'm interested because I I have studied the iridium also sixty six. Uh, uh, what or, what satellite do uh, you use? I mean because uh, Libya is a very huge a desert. I mean uh, Sahara. Right, yeah. you know, there is no other communication method except for using right, satellites, yeah. right? Yes. Gentlemen. Yes, there mm -hmm. usually it's geo satellites, uh, but uh, the Leo, uh, I don't think uh, only if it's uh, in the military purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm not aware of. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, this question, I maybe I have to. There was one friend of mine. He's he worked in the field of uh, remote sensing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a organization in Libya as for remote sensing, and usually. And the, and the first regime, it was very uh, secretly, you know, it's not easy to know what's happening inside. So, uh, but now, uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, this is very, very nice talk, but I think uh, we are having a limited time. Uh, okay. I'm just wondering if uh, people are asking uh, somebody <laughs> to... Uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, to, I think uh, we will have more discussion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we have maybe discussion my later. WhatsApp, yeah, even if I, my telephone WhatsApp, I will send you my uh, 
my website, yeah. uh, telephone, and we will have a discussion again. Me Thank and you, you Dr. Uh, Yudi, and also Dr. Ervan, yeah. How do you see you? Yes, 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 inshallah. I, I hope that inshallah. media is getting better. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, inshallah. Yeah. I mean, Thank I mean, you very much. Our dua to, to our other brothers in Libya, inshallah. Barakallah, barakallah, barakallah. Barakallah, barakallah. Recording stopped. <laughs>